Hi Nails Magazine viewers, my name is Lori Halloway, aka The Meticulous Manicurist, and today I'm going to share with you my secrets of a successful hand and arm massage that will keep the clients coming back. Um, there are two very important things that you need to give a successful hand and arm massage during a manicure, and that is touch and a repetitive rhythmic routine. If you can master those two things, you will have clients coming back over and over and over again, even if your manicure skills aren't up to par yet. So touch is really hard to show you in a video, but I'm going to do my best to explain it so you get it. So first let's talk about touch. Um, there's a fine balance with touch because you don't want to be so passive. You know, you've seen this a million times of people just rubbing lotion on somebody's arm. This does nothing for a client. That doesn't feel good. They're like, what are you doing? So that doesn't feel good. And you don't want to be creepy. You don't want to be like, you know, oh, this feels so good. And they're, they'll get all creeped out. Um, so there's just a fine line. You, you want to press into their skin. You'll see that my little indent of my thumb when I press down. You want to have enough pressure when you press down into their fascia that you can actually feel where the fascia is meeting the muscle. And if you aren't pressing hard enough to feel that, then you're not pressing hard enough. So keep pressing. Um, so once you get the touch down, then you can master your repetitive rhythmic routine. That's very important. Um, everything needs to be done in sets of three to five, depending on how long and how many movements that you do during your massage. Um, you always want to make sure that you have enough lotion on yourself and on your client as well. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the lotion on her arm. That's the first thing you're going to do during your massage. You're going to apply it to the front of her hand and arm and then sandwich her hand and flip it over and then apply it to the back. We're going to work on the whole front of the arm first, then the back of the arm, and then the hand and palm. So I'm going to show you what I do. Um, first you have to have a, just rest your elbow on the cushion, and that will happen too. Clients will be like, oh, let me help you. But you really want the pivot point to be resting on your cushion, so that's very important. So um, let the client know that they'll be more comfortable if they just rest their elbow right down the cushion. You want to get a good grip on their wrist, and you're going to start with small circular motions up their forearm. And while you're pressing downward with your thumb, you're pressing upward with your forefingers on the back. And when you're coming out to the side, you're pulling outwards as well. So you're going to do three to five sets of these, as well as three to five times up the arm. And then you're going to switch to the other side of the arm. Now this muscle right here on the front of people's arms gets very tight. So while you're warming up the muscles with those first movements, you might feel some crystallizations in there and you might feel a knot. So after you get things warmed up, you're going to go back and move up the rim of that muscle and press into it to release all of that tension. Then we're going to take her arm, flip it over, and we're going to work on the back of her arm. Now you can see how her skin is pulling a little bit. 
and that's what you want. I'm not pressing hard enough that it hurts, but I'm pressing hard enough that the fascia and the muscle are moving because any lactic acid that's built up and causing that stress in the muscles and sore arm and hand, um, you want to break that up and move it apart. You've determined where those build up of knots and lactic acid is. So first we did circular motions up the arm and now we're going to go back and do up and back. And a lot of chiropractors use this technique. It's called stripping and it helps break up, break up lactic acid um, so the body can naturally flush it out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip her hand back over and we're going to use her elbow as the pivot point. Her hand's going to come up and we're going to massage the palm of her hand. Now you want to really utilize your thumbs and work the muscle at the base of the thumb because that gets very, very tight. And right now she's getting a little like she wants to hold still for me. So I'm just going to have her relax her hand so it's just limp in your hands. Once you work the palm and all across the palm, all underneath, you want to lower her hand and now we're going to work on the fingers and you're kind of pulling you're grabbing her hand with your whole hand you're using the whole base of your palm pulling and using circular motions to go up her thumb wildlife out on the porch I don't know what animal that is Okay, so when you get to the other four fingers, you can use both hands at the same time to make things go a little faster because you are, you know, adding this to the end of a manicure service. You don't want your manicure to go over time. So once you get your routine and your timing down, everything will go pretty smooth. Everything's cracking and popping. Once you do the fingers, you want to come up to the wrist. And then we're going to go in between the bones of the hands, down in between the fingers. And like I said, once you get a great massage added to the end of your manicure service or acrylic nail service, even if your par, your skills aren't up to par yet, the clients are going to love you and they're going to keep coming back and they're going to let you keep practicing because at the end of that service, you made them feel so, so, so good. So at the end of your service, you want to pull off the end and that is it. So I hope you guys learned something today and thanks for joining me.